Hello everyone, this is Mr. McMillan. I'm here with a short little video kind of going over a couple of things before uh, you work on the SOL review questions uh, that were posted today. So uh, first off, um, we're going to look at a few or a couple of example problems. Uh, so number one says uh, to find the surface area of the column below. Okay, and uh, I'm assuming you know how to get to the formula sheet and everything else it's on the Google Classroom page. Uh, it's at the very top under the Classwork tab. Okay, so for this cone here, we want to find the surface area. And if you look at our volume or our surface area formula, the surface area is equal to pi r squared plus pi r l, where l is the slant length and r is the radius. Now, if we look at this cone, we can tell that the radius is equal to three. We know r is equal to three. Okay. However, do we know what our slant length is in this problem? Well, our slant length is on these edges here. Our slant length is there. And unfortunately, we don't know what that slant length is. We know what the height is, but we don't know what the slant length is. Now, when we talked about cones, we talked about the fact that heights and the radius of cones intersect at a right angle. So this angle here is a right angle. And that's actually going to help us figure out what the slant length is, because do you notice what shape we have here now? Well, we have a right angle here and we have a three sided figure. So we have a right triangle. Now, if we want to determine the missing side of a right triangle, there are two ways we could do it. We could use trig, but we don't have any, um, we don't have any angle measures other than the 90 degree angle. Or we could use the Pythagorean theorem. And we talked about the Pythagorean theorem a while back. And your Pythagorean theorem is given to you by a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a and b are the legs of your right triangle and c is the hypotenuse so here if we look at our right triangle here we have three as one of our legs so we have three squared and four is our other leg so we have four squared there and our slant length is our hypotenuse so that would be l squared three squared is nine 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, equal to L squared. We're squaring the L, not multiplying it by 2. So we, in order to find L, we have to do the opposite <coughs> of finding, or opposite of squaring a number, which is square rooting. And of course, what you do to one side, you do to the other. And you get that L is equal to 5 meters. So now we know what the radius is. We also know what our uh, slant length is. And now we just plug those in. So we get pi times three squared plus pi times three times five. Three squared is nine. Three times five is 15. Nine pi plus 15 pi gives us 24 pi meters squared. <clears throat> okay. So in some of these problems, even with the uh, right uh, pyramids, uh, the pyramids do the same thing as well. The height is always halfway between the, uh, the side lengths of the square. So if your side length, for example, was six on a square, then your halfway distance, the one of the legs would be three. Okay. All right, so let's look at two here. Number two says the volume of a cylinder is 200 pi meters cubed. The radius of the cylinder is five meters. What is the height of the cylinder? So it gives us a volume and the radius and it wants us to determine the height. 
So we're still going to have to use a formula, even if we're not explicitly looking for the volume. So if you look on your formula sheet, the volume of a cylinder is given to you by pi r squared times h. Well, uh, it tells us that the volume is 200 pi meters cubed. So we're going to plug in 200 pi for V equals, and then we have pi. R is our radius. Our radius is 5. So in parentheses, we're going to put 5 squared. And we don't know what the height is because that's what we're looking for. So we put the H there. There's nothing we can do with the 200 pi, so that just drops down. 5 squared is 25. So we have 25 pi times h. So normally when we solve for a, <clears throat> some, a variable with something in front of it, a number in front of it, a coefficient, we need to uh, divide by the coefficient. Here we have uh, one set of numbers here, 25 pi being multiplied by h. So to get rid of it, we have to divide both sides by 25 pi. And on the left side, the pi's cancel. And if you take 200 divided by 25, you get that your height is equal to eight meters. And of course you could plug that back in uh, to your original formula with our radius. So you'd have five squared times eight, which would be 200 and then pi. All right. And then just some uh, minor things, just kind of uh, reminders. If you're looking at a 45, 45, 90 triangle uh, on the, uh, on something, sometimes you'll get one that has something to do with this. So you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You may only have one 45 degree angle in the 90 degree, but the other one has to be 45. The key thing there is that the legs are always congruent in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if you say that your leg uh, on the left here is equal to 12 centimeters, then the bottom leg will be exactly the same. It will be 12 centimeters as well. Then of course, there is the rule where you can uh, multiply those by root two to get your hypotenuse. So your hypotenuse would be 12 root two centimeters. Um, but most of the time you're just interested in what the legs are if you're combining that with 3D shapes. And then finally, your surface area and volume of similar shapes. <coughs> We've covered this before, <coughs> but um, let's say that you had your uh, ratio uh, of your sides your sides are three times bigger than your smaller ones, okay? So if you did your surface area, surface area is in squared units, so you would say that you would have uh, three squared times bigger, which is equal to nine times bigger and volume would be three cubed bigger, which is 27 times bigger, okay? But in some instances, you'll have something that says uh, the volume of this shape is uh, 64 times larger than the volume of the smaller one, okay? So if you had the volume of a large, is 64 times bigger than the other one. Um, and it wanted you to find one of, the, uh, one of the sides or whatever else. So for instance, maybe it wanted you to find the height of something or the radius of something. Then what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be going backwards from the volume to the sides. And this is where, <laughs> this is where the, uh, cube roots and square roots come into play here. So if you're going backwards, you are doing the opposite of cubing something, which is cube rooting it. 
So in your calculator, if you wanted to figure out how big, how much bigger the sides were, you would take the cube root of 64, which means that the sides are four times as big. Okay. But if your surface area was 64 times bigger, you would do the square root of 64 instead of the cube root because surface area, you get there by squaring it. Okay. So those are just some reminders that should help you with the uh, worksheet. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I hope this video helped. Thanks guys and I will see you in the next video.